having worked for some high profile brand names, um, what have you found to be the key successful ingredients um, to perhaps a growth and integration strategy? I would say that, uh, um, and it started with Nokia when I used to work for Nokia, but then of course, uh, you know, it has been taken over with a lot of clients, is the integration, the creation of an ecosystem, as I said even before, of specialists with generalists at the same time, okay, which uh, could uh, help clients to become uh, uh, winners uh, across the purchasing decision journey, okay? When we buy something, we go along a purchasing decision process, okay? And there is one moment in that purchasing journey that we, journey that we decide we want to choose this brand rather than that brand. Because during the process, we are category buyers, really. I want to buy a car. At some point, I will decide whether it's a Mercedes or probably not a Fiat. You know, BMW, <laughs> usually, yeah. <laughs> so, the, so the question is, uh, what is the journey of my customers? How can I create an ecosystem that can create that valuable conversation along the journey? with the specialists that can, let, can make me win. The gaming can be one thing, the streaming can be another thing, but uh, is the gaming right for every industry, every category? No, okay? Uh, is uh, the streaming right for every industry, every category, and every, and every market? No, and so on and so forth. So you need to make sure that you bring the right people uh, to the table, okay? And, inter and create that ecosystem regardless of the group they come from, okay? Uh, managing, I would say that a good client, a good manager at the client side, is somebody extremely uh, effective at managing the ecosystem. Uh, startups, there is a lot of companies, large, uh, large marketers that are investing in startups, major threat, by the way, for the groups and for the advertising agencies, because they believe in startups. This is, in my opinion, and that's something that I always believed in, uh, something an agency should do. They should put money out there to be invested in startups, uh, like, uh, you know, like creating a, uh, startups academies or whatever, okay? To make sure that if my strategy is uh, uh, being the best in retail, I need to get as many startups as possible, helping them with funding, uh, uh, you know, uh, with product that can help me to succeed in retail because that's what my client will buy from me, okay? Uh, but if you look around, uh, let's say I'm not familiar with many of these uh, exercises being, being run. Is more the client doing uh, doing himself or, or herself this uh, this task, which is a missed opportunity for uh, for the group. I totally agree with what, you, with what you've just said there. I think it's a huge missed opportunity, especially if we take into consideration. I think part of the challenge is that mental shift um, is of knowing that you've got one client who can make you millions, or do you want a million small ones, which is more of a hassle and you've got to manage that. Which one would you rather go for? You'd probably go for the bigger if client. The you know. if the but yeah, but everyone's trying to fish in that pool and, and get that big client because it's just more manageable. You need less overhead, so to speak. I mean, in the sense that, you know, you've only got to send one invoice as opposed to send a million different invoices the credit control aspect of getting a million invoices is a headache in itself so it's i think it's more of uh, the operational cost but i actually i do agree with you if somebody could come up with some sort of concept i mean if we look at the sme marketplace obviously that's going to contract over, over this period more people are starting to get on the internet so um, you're going to see a new load of um, wealth of millionaires you can call it from the digital economy so you make a really really good point there um yeah. and i just wonder why people haven't started it. i mean why do you think that is i mean you've worked for so many large companies that have subsidiaries as well within it you, said it, you, said, you said it yourself you said it yourself because uh because the focus is, uh, you know, the focus is uh, the steak or the, the pasta that is there in front of you rather than the opportunity, you know, probably one year, one or two yeah. years down the road. Okay? But that was my point about thinking strategically, you know, yeah, okay. you know, are we, are we not thinking strategically? Are we not investing in the future because we're in the present moment and we just have to give shareholder value? So I want to understand, do, as the leaders, have we been programmed in, have our leaders been programmed to think short term as opposed to start thinking long term? So do you think someone like Amazon, Facebook, 
Google, they take a monopoly because they don't think of the short term gains. They think of the longer term as opposed to, OK, what is what are we reporting quarterly? What are we giving to our shareholders? Yeah. In, in reality, in reality, again, we are comparing two apples and pears. OK, so because uh, one is I uh, mean, they used to be small at one point. <laughs> oh, no, you're right. You're right. But but I agree. Let's talk about small versus Amazon and Google. OK. So it's, uh, it's uh, some people think that short term is nothing to do with long term. I think that uh, long term is the collection of a lot of short terms, which is the point. Yeah. So I have a strategy and I need to go to, for that strategy. Yeah, I need to deliver results in the short term, but I cannot compromise my strategy. I mean, if I compromise my strategy, basically I become uh, a collection of, I create that inconsistency that will be at the base of my failure. Okay. So it's all about creating uh, those short, uh, cre delivering in the short term uh, by looking at the lighthouse and making sure that I am achieving, uh, I'm, I'm on that path and I stay on that path. Uh, the profit at all costs and the pressure, we were speaking before about the pressure. Some people, um, some people unfortunately lose, some leaders lose their, uh, lose their track because they, oh, I need to deliver this year because if I don't deliver this year, then I'm off, okay? And therefore, you know, leave the strategy aside, let's do this, then we'll take it, we will see again. Um, if you look at the tenure of uh, senior people, uh, you know, in the past, on the market side in particular, in the past, uh, it used to be four or five years, okay? Now it's 18 months, because uh, CEOs are expecting, in particular, CEOs are expecting CMOs to deliver growth, okay? So they are all, they are, become, they are moving from being called CMOs to being called chief growth officer, uh, in many cases, not having the tools to deliver that growth. Um, and the same, the same is at the agency. The agency needs to deliver growth, uh, and uh, that the operation in the agency group needs to deliver growth, and what is happening next year is another problem. You know, you need to deliver now, and you are as good as the last thing you have done in this industry, okay? So you understand, if you are as good as the last thing you have done, people think to, you know, Surviving strategy calls for, okay, let's fire 10 people and we have another point margin. I'm, I, I'm just giving you, uh, but that's, that, that's the problem, okay? That, that, that's really the problem that uh, this industry is, uh, is facing. Uh, and that's not a problem that, that, that startups are facing because they are growing, they are sharing, they have a different type of reward strategy towards their staff. There is, uh, there is enthusiasm, okay, versus, uh, versus uh, let's say, uh, factory type of uh, feeling, okay? Um, but this happens everywhere. I mean, uh, uh, after I left WVP, I went to New York and I visited different groups and so on. And you, you know, when you, I thought for the first time I saw myself as a, as a client, you know? You start feeling where you are from when you enter the elevator, okay? You enter the elevator and you find employees of that organization. You already know, is this the, <laughs> what is the air in this place, okay? Um, that's why I said, uh, you know, media agencies are very different from, uh, you know, creating a marketing agency. Because in my experience, uh, the business is there today. The growth is there. The opportunities are there. Uh, clients are valuing uh, the expertise of media agencies, okay? Uh, so that's really, in my opinion, the biggest challenge that uh, creative groups uh, and marketing agency groups have is uh, gaining that type of appreciation from, from, from clients. And the only way to achieve that is not running after uh, the next $100, but making sure that they can provide a strong reason for clients to appreciate their contribution. Look, let me get your thoughts on the next piece. Um, the evolution of the internet and social media has created a lot of traffic and noise. Um, what trends do you anticipate that we can expect to see the next two to three years? Okay, first of all, uh, you know, <clears throat> there is a lot of investment going towards uh, e-commerce, social media being a new channel, really like a TV channel, because you know, people, especially the influencers are, uh, you know, are talking, they have millions of followers, they are the new TV channel, in my opinion, okay? Um, I think that, uh, uh, again, the rush for growth uh, is pulling, is pushing people to invest lots of money into this new stuff, uh, in particular, the e-commerce piece. Um, whereby this is very important, but uh, if you take an eye off, uh, you know, 60, 70% of your sales, which is still brick and mortar, it's a problem, okay? Digital is, uh, now, let's say, like when, when, the TV, when the TV came on, they said cinema will disappear, and now people think, uh, okay, digital is in, uh, physical is disappearing. No, it's not gonna happen, okay? It's a new channel, it's an important channel, it's a channel that delivers convenience and the ability to reach far out than what you could physically. 
But in reality, the life is physical. I'm physical. I need to touch people because I'm Italian, so we touch people. <laughs> we touch each other. <laughs> okay. so, so, yeah. It's, uh, so I need to be physical. I need to go to the store. I need to look at it. I need to buy on Amazon and Alibaba. I, I hope I didn't say anything inconvenient. <laughs> so, so the point is, the point is uh, um, you know, it's life is digital, and you need to manage a digital, you know, a digital business. Okay. So in that digital business, so therefore, if you don't have any uh, e-commerce solution, then whether you create yours or you or you couple your uh, your activities with Amazon, Alibaba, or you know one one of those large platforms is fine. Uh, but uh, in reality, you also need to think: How am I going to use social media in order to deliver more relevance to my offering? Okay, uh, because yes, awareness is an opportunity, but relevance is an even greater opportunity. Okay. Um, so these are new channels, and uh, some of those channels are credible, more credible than others, okay? Um, you have seen that uh, uh, large customers like Unilever, Procter & Gamble, at some point have divested from uh, those channels because they didn't see results coming in, uh, but then they started to reinvestigate. Uh, reinvest again. Uh, so all in all, you know, is uh, the whole social media and uh, influencer part and celebrities and so on, it's... Uh, it's kind of an evolving situation that will have to reach uh, um, more clarity between uh, what are the solid channels that can help me to deliver my message in a relevant way, driving sales, and what are uh, those less solid channels that need the noise that needs to be cleared, okay? Um, overall, we, have, we will see, or we should see, the right companies going for the right balance between, as I said, their uh, management of their physical physical assets. Okay, how do I manage my uh, key accounts, you know, my key distributors, uh, versus their uh, abilities to reach far with their uh, digital of, uh, digital offering. At the same time, governments should intervene, in my opinion, uh, with the help because it doesn't seem that uh, the platform themselves are doing it at this stage successfully, okay? Making sure that uh, when somebody goes uh, online, uh, lives in a trustful uh, world, okay? Uh, where privacy is respected and where uh, basically I know that I, if I do a transaction, that transaction is a successful transaction where we, we are uh, exchanging value and I'm not being frauded, okay? This is, there is a lot of this happening, which is, uh, getting, especially in some countries versus other countries, of course, the world is different, okay? Um, which is uh, getting people, uh, uh, there is a lot of fear from people to go, to go, to just jump into the e-commerce side, so buying things online because of all, because of this lack of privacy and, uh, and frauds, okay? So all these, uh, you know, needs to be sorted out uh, in order for people to move significantly in uh, the digital space. I'm in Italy today, and Italy is a country that is not as advanced as UK in as far as the digital, uh, the penetration of the digital media to start with, and for sure the use of uh, uh, e-commerce uh, sites and uh, use of credit cards on e-commerce and so on. Uh, so, as I, as if you want to see worldwide uh, sales and worldwide investments to increase uh, significantly and organically, there is some regulation that needs to occur first. You know, so that's what uh, will happen. I know we've been talking about video, but people still have been quite slow to shift on to that. Even Facebook has gone down the video route as well. Do you think we'll start seeing more of the video come to life? 100%, yes. Sorry if I didn't mention before. Yes, 100%. You can see that uh, people want to, as I said, people want to see what are we dealing with, especially when uh, buying uh, in uh, the digital space. What am I dealing with? Is this going to, solution going to solve my problem? Uh, I was talking before about personalization at scale. Uh, part of the personalization at scale is really uh, talking to the behavior of people, okay? And uh, talking to the behavior of people, you are talking maybe to the two of us, despite I'm Italian, you're English, but we may have the same behavior. So we may buy the same thing if we see that behavior reflected in the offering, in the proposition that the marketer will bring forward. So it's all about making sure that that, uh, you know, that that, uh, um, that all the communication platform that we are using and the, and the content is talking to the behaviors of people, uh, in particular to the behaviors that are probably going to be the core of the business for, uh, for uh, that product or that brand. So yeah, video is extremely important. 
not only for the youngsters, but also for baby boomers like I am, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, making sure that uh, I can see what it is, I can see how it performs, that it satisfy my need, then I go for it. Yeah, 100%. Please, guys, don't forget to like, share, comment, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.